everyone, thanks for joining us. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new Summit Racing 64 to 67 GMA body frame bracing kit. This new design incorporates all of our best features to take your stock Chevelle frame to the next level. We've optimized the mounting points for increased strength and rigidity while maximizing exhaust, drive shaft, and ground clearance. The entire assembly is now pre-fit and fixture welded to eliminate all the difficult and time-consuming fabrication required by other kits on the market. Included are the main rail assemblies which are now self-locating and feature an additional body mount location, pre-bent boxing plates, the rear cross member, and an adjustable transmission cross member that allows for all the popular engine and transmission combinations to be installed in your chassis. You also get weld on body mount reinforcement washers, our trick stainless exhaust hangers, and all the hardware necessary to complete your installation. Now, let's take a look at how simple this kit is to install in your chassis. Okay, so we're ready to install our frame bracing kit. Uh, first thing you need to do is remove the frame from the body. Uh, you probably could do it with the body on, but it's gonna go a lot easier body off. So, remove the body, strip your chassis down and get it set up on a level surface for you to work from. If you don't have a frame table or a fixture table, you can do this on jack stands. You just need to take your time, ensure that the frame stays level front to back, side to side, and just be methodical and slow with your welding. Now's the time when you're gonna use the included dimension sheets in your instructions to make sure that your frame is straight and square and within factory specifications. If it's not, when you weld in that frame bracing kit, you're gonna lock in any twist or tolerance that's in that chassis. So take the time, make sure it's straight, and then proceed. The more time you spend in setup is gonna ensure a better installation at the end. Okay, so now we've got our frame set up and level, and we've measured and checked it twice and make sure that we're straight and square. Uh, so now we need to prep the areas that we're going to be welding the kit into. In this case, we've just gone and stripped the paint along the edges that we're going to weld. But you can take your frame and have it sandblasted, media blasted. The more time you spend in prep, the better your end result is going to be. So we've kind of skipped ahead a little bit here. And we've gone ahead and we've removed these factory supports in the open C channel. So just cutting the welds and removing that piece is all you need to do to prep for the boxing plates. Now, the edges of your C-channel, if those are tweaked or bowed or, or not straight, simple trick is gonna be using a crescent wrench and you can just close that on the edge and tweak the edges of the open C-channel until it's nice and straight. Again, once you have it nice and straight, fit it multiple times, then you go ahead, tack your boxing plates in place. Okay, so we've got our chassis set up. We've checked it for squareness and, and factory dimensions. We've stripped the areas to be welded and we've got our boxing plates tacked in place. Now we're ready to install the main rail assemblies. So these guys lift up from the bottom and the bottom edge of these plates sit against the frame. Now it's gonna locate, this round section here is gonna locate against the edge of the body mount access hole and the rear mounting pad is gonna box that rear control arm mount and locate off of it. So we can go ahead and we can fit that into place right like that. And now we can have that clamped front and rear. Okay, so I've got the front edge of our assembly clamped into position against that body mount hole. And if you find that you need to close up some gap and bring the kit, the assembly, to your boxing plate in this direction, what you can do is just trim the front edge of these lower control arm mounts, and that'll allow this kit to come in and sit nice and tight in all the positions that you want to weld. Uh, there is some differences in the frames and a little bit of tolerance allowed, so it's no, you're not compromising the control arm mount because we're actually boxing that in with thicker metal and welding it on three sides as well as tying it in to the frame itself. So I'm just going to go ahead now that I like the way this is fitting, I'm going to clamp this in place so we can check our levels 
and start tacking this assembly in. Okay, so now we got both sides of the kit tacked in place and level with each other. We're gonna go ahead and just bolt the transmission cross member in place just to help tie everything together while we carry on with the welding process. And I'm just gonna point out now that depending whether you're using uh, an LS, a small block, a big block, or any range of transmission from a Turbo 400 all the way up to a T56 or a 480, this transmission cross member can be reversed and used in two different orientations throughout the slot to give you a different reach for the different transmissions. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolt that in and then we'll move on to the rear cross member. Okay, now we've got both of our side rails tacked in place. We bolted our transmission cross member in just to keep everything tied together throughout the welding process. Now we just need to fit our rear cross member. So this cross member we've designed to be a little long uh, in the width from notch to notch, just so that if you have any tolerance in your frame and you do trim it and change the width of these back bars a little, the cross member will still fit. So you may find, depending on your setup, to get this sitting where you need it, you may just need to grind the edges a little just to adjust the fit. But basically, this fits up like this, slides in against the bars until it's nice and tight, and you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that while you're in the process of trimming that you're sitting level front to back and side to side. And then before we go ahead and weld this, we're just gonna pull a tape measure from the front cross member to the edge of this, just to make sure that we're sitting square in the frame. Once we have that fitting where we want it, we can go ahead and tack this and then double check some measurements and proceed with welding. So I've got the rear cross member sitting where I want it. I've, I've trimmed the edges to get it sitting level front to back and side to side. The only thing I'm gonna do is follow up with a quick measurement here off the back of this mount to the front edge of here, just to ensure that both sides are the same, which is putting this cross member square to the kit itself. Really, like I said, once your frame has been checked for dimensions to factory specs, as long as the kit is up against the bottom of the chassis front and rear and that your transmission mount is level side to side, you really just need to check that this is square and you're ready to move ahead with welding. Okay, so we got our rear cross member tacked. We're ready to proceed with welding. We just have to install our body mount reinforcement washers. So there's two sizes. There's two of the little holes. Those are for the rad cradle. Don't forget to put those in. And for your body mount locations, these are gonna serve two purposes. One, they're gonna give you that little bit of clearance uh, additional that you will want in installing this kit. And two, uh, the edge of the holes from the rubber bushings are sometimes corroded. Um, so that's gonna repair the edge. So just dress the areas of your body mount locations and go ahead and stitch these in and we can weld them fully when we finish welding the whole kit. Okay, we're ready to weld this kit in fully. Um, one thing you wanna do is just take your time, be slow and methodical, and do equal and opposite welds. So if I weld this top plate here, I'm gonna weld the opposing side, and then I'm gonna go and put a weld back here, and so on and so forth. If you space yourself out, take some breaks, and do this slowly in you know up to three inch sections, then you're not gonna induce too much heat and movement in the frame. Take it slow, be precise, your end result will be better. So we'll go ahead and weld this now and then give you a, uh, a shot of what it looks like fully welded. Okay, so last two features I wanna talk about. One, uh, we've got our built-in exhaust hanger locations into the side plates here. 
Um, this is configured to work with some of the predominant pre-done exhaust kits and we've added those hangers to help keep everything in place. Uh, and, and lastly is our additional body mount location. So if you're using uh, a, a solid or a very hard urethane body mount bushing, uh, we recommend that you tie in this extra body brace into this tab here. So when your, your floor, your body's back on, uh, that, that tab's gonna end up on this unused brace here that doesn't include a factory body mount. Um, and so you're just gonna use this as a drill guide to drill up through once the, the body's bolted on and you drill through both layers, through the brace and the floor. And if you want, you can come ahead on the, the other side, on the floor side and enlarge that hole so the bolt fits through and you're just bolting this brace to this rail. If you're running rubber mounts, you may not want to use this uh, and just let it float, but we recommend you add this for extra rigidity. So at this point, um, you're ready to install your body again and uh, enjoy the benefits of a increasingly stiff and rigid stock chassis and all the performance benefits that it'll bring you. Thanks for watching this video.